the Republican Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Boehner, is filing suit against the President of the United States. Joining me around the table, Sean Spicer, Communications Director for the Republican National Committee, and his Democratic counterpart, Mo Alethe, radio talk show host, Stephanie Miller, and Carly Fiorina, creator of a new super PAC aimed at finding women voters for Republicans. Let me start out with this, because in a op-ed that he wrote for CNN.com, the Speaker lays out his case for this suit that he wants to file. Is the president simply not living up to his constitutional duties? He says, in part, the president has circumvented the American people and their elected representatives through executive action, changing and creating his own laws and excusing himself from enforcing statutes he has sworn to uphold, at times even boasting about his willingness to do it, as if daring the American people to stop him. And that is why later this month we will bring legislation to the House floor that would authorize the House of Representatives to file suit in an effort to compel President Obama to follow his oath of office and faithfully execute the laws of our country. And just so we get in the other side, um, here was the president's reaction to uh, some of the things that he has done because, of course, he says, but Congress is not acting, so I will. Here's what he had to say. I might have said in, in the heat of the moment during one of these debates, uh, I want to raise the minimum wage, so sue me when I do. So this was not an attitude the Republicans appreciated, I must say, the so sue me. What is this about? Is this a real lawsuit to force the president? Is this a midterm lawsuit? What's going on here? There you go. Midterm stunt, Candy. I mean, this is just when the American people thought there was going to be nothing sillier to sue or impeach the president over than oral sex. The Republicans have come up with a new non-reason. Um, as we all know, President Bush had way more executive orders than President Obama. As he said the other day, I'm not going to apologize for doing something when they're doing nothing. You can look at any chart. You know the numbers. Unprecedented uh, obstructionism, unprecedented number of filibusters. Um, and I think the American people know it. Good, John. Well, well, I was going to say, look, the, the reason that this is fundamentally different than ever has happened before is for in the last three years alone, 13 times the Supreme Court unanimously, 9 to 0, including all of the president's liberal picks, have struck down the president's executive orders. This is fundamentally unconstitutional. What the speaker is saying is that the House of Representatives and the Senate have a role defined by our Constitution in which that's how the process works. The president may get frustrated, the president may not like it, but that doesn't mean he can go around them. And the court all of the justices, from the most liberal to the conservative, have agreed with what Speaker Boehner is trying to do because 13 times in three years, they've said what the president has done has been a constitutional overreach. I mean, this is not an old tension, but it does seem to have taken on kind of new urgency. We're at a different level than we normally are when the executive branch fights with the legislative branch. Yeah, and I think that's because we are so close to a midterm election date. And everything that this Congress, that this House Republican leadership has, has uh, focused on over the course of the past uh, year has been focused on turning out their base. That's all it is. Um, whether it is yet another vote to repeal the Affordable Care Act, whether it is a yet another hearing on uh, Benghazi, whether it is now suing the president and some members of Congress talking about impeaching the president. This is about ginning up their base. The Republican leadership in the House of Representatives is, is at historic lows in terms of its public opinion. People are tired of this. They are tired of a Congress that would rather fight the president in order to turn out their base than work with the president to get things done. Go ahead, Carly. Well, you know, I think the act, President Obama's act of, wow, wow, I can't get anything done because the Republicans won't let me, it's getting really old. And that's what the majority of American people think. It's getting old. And that's why the majority of the American people think he can't get the job done. Unfortunately, when you continue to use as campaign rhetoric, the Republicans won't let me get anything done and they're not doing anything themselves. The facts just aren't on his side. Forty pieces of job creating legislation, all of them blocked by Harry Reid in the Democratic Senate. So I actually think the American people are figuring this out and honestly, um, with all the problems we have in this nation, for the president's only answer for the last two and a half years to be, I can't get anything done because the Republicans won't let me, makes him look weak, not strong, makes him look like he cannot lead, and that's what the American people have concluded. Let me um, 
turn you since I since I have your attention here, I want to turn you to your latest effort here um, which is a, a what looks like a pretty daunting task which is to attract more women uh, to the Republican Party um, this is has been a not for married women because married women married white women tend to vote Republican and did vote uh, heavily for Romney but single women minority women uh, have been repelled by the Republican Party why and how do you fix it well first of all we're focusing on a ground game in six states, not all over the entire country, although hopefully we these techniques will work. But we're taking it on now because, frankly, a lot of women, me included, are sick of the war on women. And we saw it in spades on Monday after the Hobby Lobby case, which, you know, the women of Hobby Lobby had access to contraception through their company insurance plan before Obamacare. They have access to contraception free, 16 forms of it after this ruling. But somehow, you know, this is the long arm of business in the Republican Party reaching into the body of women. It's ridiculous. I am reminded I brought a prop. My husband and I were having Chinese food the other day and I opened my fortune cookie. And here's what my fortune said. Strong and bitter words indicate a weak cause. And that's exactly right. The war on women is shameless, baseless propaganda. There is no fact to it, but it's worked because it scared women to death. Enough. Enough. Let me ask you, Stephanie, about the culture wars, because it does seem to me that on Monday you could think, wow, it's, it's culture wars, too. Uh, this had to do with birth control. But on any number of issues, whether it's gay rights, um, whether it's uh, climate change, uh, uh, the, the president has put these issues front and center. And if the culture wars are back, and if they play out at the ballot box, who does that favor? Well, first of all, Candy, I was not told we could bring props. Uh, you can, I anytime. I did not expect Carly Fiorina <laughs> to be the carrot top of this panel. Um, but I think, um, and by the way, I respect you as a woman very much in your accomplishments. I even read that you uh, studied medieval history, which I, <laughs> which I think will come in handy with trying to defend the Republicans in their war coming. on women. <laughs> But, uh, I, I, you know, Candy, every woman I know is furious about the Hobby Lobby decision. Ninety-eight percent of Catholic women use birth control. This is not just a war against and women. And they have this 16 is, forms this of is it. A, this is a war <laughs> against science, Carly, because... Oh, for heaven's be, sake. Be, because, because these religious, you know, people believe certain drugs cause abortion. Doctors and scientists say they do not. So they actually prevent implantation. They prevent abortion. So now we should have mandate 20 forms of contraception for free. For free, that's what they I get, have and need it for endometriosis. Four. What, how, how do you say your small government and get the government involved in in those personal decisions between a I, woman and her doctor? I, I, it's, this is crazy to me. Your arguments are so counterfactual. Twenty forms you this of was birth open. control. This is already a Twenty forms floodgates. of birth control Judge are Ginsburg, mandated, and by the way, right not the by Obamacare. Defense. They're mandated by some HHS bureaucrats who go into the basement and write a regulation after Obamacare passes, and they decide, elected by no one, accountable to no one, they decide. 20 forms of birth control have to be offered for this is already free. Let me try to get the Judge Ginsburg is absolutely right. <laughs> Judge Ginsburg was making a political statement, not it. a legal Yosis statement. Probably. Um, but I, I want to just go just a little 50,000 foot here in, and, and tell me whether the culture wars are back. And how do you frame, let's just take the, the, the uh, birth control issue in the Supreme Court decision. Which was about religious liberty. How, well, I think that, that religious liberty and Obamacare is how the Republicans right. go at it, and the war on women is how Democrats go at well, it. Well, I, I think, and, and there's also a constitutional, kind of touching my earlier point, there's a constitutional overreach, which is that Obamacare that's comes right. in and, and undermines the ability uh, of, and that's what the court ruled, that this was a constitutional overreach, and it continues to be, uh, not just this, but this entire our administration continues to think that, that these issues are, are such. Um, but when it comes to your question, is this a culture war? I think Carly pointed out earlier, we've passed, the House has passed over 100 bills to the Senate that deal with job creation, regulation, thing. That's what our focus has been. The number one focus of the American people has been jobs and the economy. That's what the House Republicans, which is the only, we control one half 
of one branch of government. Sean, I didn't and, and, and that's what we have. Hold on, hold on. But that's what we have done. The, the interesting thing about the culture war is that it's been the Democrats who have scared folks into deciding because they can't compete on jobs and the economy. They have no agenda. I guess, on. Wait, 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 w
and the Republicans Everything are saying but no jobs. to that. Everything if, but if jobs. If you think those things don't cause <laughs> jobs, and jobs. that explains why Republican numbers are so much worse than the president. Well, people yes. don't vote for parties. They vote for people. They vote for people. And well, right and now, people are saying this are president that, isn't getting the job done like right now. I want to show you something that just struck us as kind of interesting this week, which is you wrote a book a couple years ago? 2006. Right? Called... Tough choices called tough choices. And no, no, no. And Mine's then, tough choices. Your tough choices, choices hard and choices. She's hard choices. So, you all seem to have a lot in common. What do you make of this? I thought this was kind of amazing. Well, uh, it was amazing. I can say, uh, if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I am flattered. <laughs> so you think Hillary Clinton saw that and thought, good book? Cover. Oh, there's no one better to imitate than Carly Fiorina when it comes to a successful woman. <laughs> There you go. I hope you all will come back. Stephanie, it's good to have you on our set. So nice to be here, Candy. Always, gentlemen, thank you. Thanks, Candy. Candy. See you. Just ahead, 